you are going to absolutely love this new masking feature inside of Lightroom Classic, Lightroom, and Adobe Camera Raw. Check the link below because there is a, or check the description below, there is a link to a freebie preset. Once you see the new masking tools, you're gonna to see the reason why you're gonna want this little free preset, but let's take a look here. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my masking panel on a photo, and a new thing that you're gonna see here is the landscape mask option. It's a good title, it's not a great title because it encourages you to think it's only for landscapes. So we're gonna click on this and you'll see that it includes sky, which we've had for a while, architecture, vegetation, that's only three. There's a total of seven different parts of the scene that it will recognize. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as this video goes on here. But this is just three of them. It's gonna essentially create masks for all of them, okay? So now we can go over to the sky, maybe pull that back, pull the highlights back from some of those bright areas inside of there. Then we can go over here to architecture. This is where it really gets powerful because now I can make the architecture, any buildings, anything that's in the photo, I still got all of my masking controls that I can use on that. So I'll make that a little bit brighter. I'll go down to the color section and I'll add a little bit of warmth to it. Maybe I'll even make it just a hair brighter. Now, that architecture wasn't perfect. If I turn on the overlay, you can see it even spilled over into the sky. I don't really care for the edges that it's left on there. So especially, I'm not gonna make it this bright, but you'll definitely see some uh, little fringes in there. If I were to make it brighter, you'll see that the edges aren't perfect, but you still have access to all of your other masking tools. So now I can go over here and hit subtract, select sky, and that will instantly make that edge better because it removes any sky that might have spilled over into that architectural uh, selection or mass that was created. Of course, I would probably not leave it that bright, but we'll go ahead there. Come over here to vegetation, open up those shadows a bit, add a little bit of whites, a little bit of blacks, and maybe even some color saturation and warmth just to, uh, just to boost some of the colors there. That's before. That's after. Again, that's before and after, and that was all done with automatic masks that Lightroom created for us. Well, as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty excited by this stuff. I can't go throwing around biggest update ever, so we'll go pretty close to that. The, the masking panel that, got, that came out four years ago, I think that was the biggest update ever, but, but this is really, really close, and it's for everybody, anybody that shoots outdoors can take advantage of this stuff. You're gonna see as there, we go along, there's up to seven different segments. Before we dive into some other examples, take a look below, there's a link down there. Um, you're gonna see as we generate these segments in the mask, it can be a little bit cumbersome, always having to click the check boxes. There's a little freebie that is just gonna save you a little bit of time and sanity with that. Number two, I developed a little preset and mini course, it's called Scene Split AI Presets and Mini Course. Um, and I did this to give you a head start, give you a boost. It is, it is extremely affordable for what you get. It is, is very, very affordable, very easy and quick to get through, but it will take what I think is gonna be a major shift and change to your editing. And I think it will take that and make that whole process a lot faster. So feel free to check that out as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. We're going to once again, head over to the masking panel and we will click on the new landscape option here. This time we're gonna see more masks, all right? We're gonna see uh, one of them, which is the sky. We've, we've had the sky before. In fact, if I undo this and just go back to our uh, regular masking, you're gonna see there, there's always a preset for the sky. Uh, the one that you'll see inside the landscape is the same exact one. It's not gonna be any different from that. We've also got architecture. We've got vegetation, we've got water, all right? Think waterfalls, think pools for a real estate photographer, um, think you know anything water for a sports photographer. Come down here and wildlife too. Uh, come down here, we've got natural ground. The only two that are missing, because it's hard to find a scene that's got all of them, the only two that are missing are artificial ground, which would be roads and paths. Uh, things along those lines, and then mountains, okay? So those are the seven segments that you, we can, uh, that Lightroom will automatically create right now. So we're gonna go through and check all of these, which I had mentioned. Check the link in the description because that, create, that, that gives you access to a free preset 
that'll essentially do this for you every time so that you don't have to go in here, select all of them. We wanna create five separate masks. I think most of the time we're gonna to wanna to do that and we just hit create mask and you'll see we've got now uh, five masks inside of here. So if we were to start up there at the sky, I'd say, you know, maybe just pull back a little bit on the highlights. I think the sky was, was looking pretty good to begin with. We come down here to architecture. First things first, the mask isn't perfect and it's not always gonna be perfect. Uh, for some reason, it's selecting part of the bridge over here. So what we can do is, the important thing, we still have access to all of our old masking tools. So now I go over here to subtract, I can choose the brush, and now I just go in and I just subtract the brush or subtract the bridge out of that mask. Okay, so now I'm back over there to just those buildings. I've got to break into the video for a very quick word from our sponsor. I hope you watch this one. This is, you will benefit from this in some way, I promise. So the first thing is that free preset. Talked about how there's all those different segments. This preset will keep you from having to check them and do that all the time. It just makes life a lot easier and faster. So you can find that and the link in the description there. The second is I created a brand new little product called the Scene Split Presets and Mini Course. It's really meant for, for two groups of people, but I think, I think both of those groups merge at some point. So the first part, it's got a bunch of presets in it. These are meant to just get you, get you moving, get you exposed to these masks. Uh, I do believe everybody that uses presets needs to tweak them and tune them. So not only do, do the presets get you moving fast, but there's videos in there that show you how to uh, adjust them, how to make them tuned for your taste, even how you make your own. The second part is almost 90 minutes of training. These are tips I, I honestly don't think you're gonna find elsewhere. Here's a great example. Eagle, sky, tree, all right? We could usually select the eagle in the sky pretty easily, but now we can use that vegetation mask for the tree. We can subtract part of the eagle, we can subtract part of the sky, and we get a much better mask. I'm gonna walk through that later on in the video there. I know it went really fast, but that's the kind of stuff that I expose you to after using these things for weeks. I think those are the little things that are gonna sneak by a lot of people, and I just wanna get you through that learning curve faster because this is gonna be a big change to your workflow. It's landscape presets, but it is anything outdoors. You name the genre, if it's outdoors, you can benefit from these. So I do hope you'll swing by and check it out. Very affordable price point, very easy to get through. And I think it'll make your editing faster and easier once you understand how to use it all. When we're done, we can just click on close down there for the masking panel. And there's nothing saying that we can't come back to all of the regular settings and go in here and start to do some global adjustments to the photo. And the rest of our workflow can resume after that. All right, earlier I promised I would go through that example with the eagle a little bit slower so you can get an idea for, uh, for, for what I was doing and really for the power of what we have here. But I'm gonna to go to my masking panel. Of course, I've been able to select the subject for, for a long time and I can go in here and you know maybe add a little bit of shadow to it. But we'll go back, we're gonna create a new mask. I'll do select landscape and it's going to detect, I think it would be sky and vegetation here. So let's turn both of those on and we'll create masks for that. So at this point, now I could go in here and adjust the sky, which I no, don't really have to. I think the sky looks pretty good, but here's where things get a little bit weird. And this is where, this is where understanding the nitty gritty and getting past this learning curve can help you. Take a look at the vegetation. There's two problems with it. One, it's not perfect, okay? It's, uh, it's got part of the eagle's feet in there. So the first thing we would do is go to subtract, come down here to select subject, and that gets rid of any overlap with the eagle. The other problem we have is there's a lot of blue inside of this vegetation. You can see all the blue sky through there. So if I go in here and I start to, to make adjustments to it, it's not gonna look right. And I wouldn't make it that bright, but we'll go over here and we'll do subtract, select sky, and now we get a much, much better selection. Again, that's too bright, but uh, we get a much, much better mask and selection edge there. I'm even gonna undo that because I wanna show you one more. We could do subtract, color range, select the blue, and that will take it out of there. I don't think it's as good as select sky, but at the same time, these are all those little tips and tricks and things that you need to be aware of because it makes using these presets so much more powerful. The chances on them being perfect out of the gate are, are slim to none, but knowing how to modify them and having that creative ability, I think is really important. And, and overall just helps you direct 
people's attention to the parts of the scene that you want them to see. And that's really what I think a lot of this editing, uh, especially creative editing, is all about. So uh, I hope this gave you a quick introduction to this stuff. It's exciting. It's, it's definitely a major change and a major shift. And it's also exciting to see you know, where it could go when you think about just, just what we got on day one. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see about where this stuff can go in the future. Don't forget, check the link in the description for the free one-click preset to generate all those masks. I do hope you'll also check out my uh, presets and mini course. I created it to be very, very affordable because I want I want I didn't want that to stand in the way. I want you to get ahead of this and really incorporate it into your workflow. Lastly, if you're looking for a video to go to next, Photoshop also got some pretty big updates for for just a mid-year update there's some pretty beefy features in there so if you're interested in that that's a great video to go watch next